Good morning, guys. Winter, three feet of snow, minus 35 degrees Celsius outside. This is Gary's research time for metal detecting. Behind me, I have a map from 1612. And this is a French map of our region and totally shows the first explorers that came through our area. The reason I'm doing this this morning is I'm going to do our third episode of Historia Euphoria. And there is a finding in this video which I completely glossed over. Didn't really know what it was. And it was a Jesuit ring. Now through research this winter, what I've established is that in 1625, <laughs> yes, crazy, 1600s, the Jesuits started to use the St. Lawrence and move. Uh, they wanted to do spreading of the word of God to the natives in the more northern regions. 1625 was the first uh, recorded trip that they did down the St. Lawrence. This ring that I found could very well have come from that very first exploration. It's somewhere in that time, 1600s, because the Jesuits were replaced uh, before the 1700s. We've got a ring. I glossed over it. I want to show you guys this map. We'll do an overlay of modern uh, Google versus this map. This map is amazing. I can't believe the settlements that are on here. They show the native settlements, the uh, French colonies, uh, people that are, you know, immigrating into Canada at that time, and the numbers of villages and settlements they show blows my mind. In our school system up here, they glossed over all of this stuff. It was not, you just had no clue that there was this much life here from Europe at that point in time. So anyway, I'm going to show you guys today's video. There are some finds in there that are, like, this is probably the most important find I've ever dug in the field and we glossed right over it. So I'm gonna give you guys some information on it. I'm gonna show you guys uh, the item. We'll compare these maps. And uh, I apologize for Gary's inept ability to show you the true history, like to, to make you feel <laughs> 1612 right here. Here's the video guys. All right, guys, I wanted to start by showing you this really cool 1612 map. This is a carte geographique de la Nouvelle France. Okay, and I said we would start by looking at something interesting I found. Just for reference, here's the St. Lawrence. And look what I found on here. Right there. Look at that. That's a Templar cross, baby. This is an amazing piece of history you would never have guessed look at all the settlements that are on here okay they're, they're showing not only do they have different styles they actually show the Algonquian on here so a native tribe and and it looks like they're you know these are definitely longhouse style right here okay Algonquian longhouse style representation here settler representation over here and just look at the number of settlements that are on here. There are forts, there are ports, there are things I don't even know what, what they are. There's, there's one with a flag on it. So that's got to be, you know, a main bastion right here. Okay. We have got Lac de Champlain. This is the St. Lawrence. Montreal is just a little hump in the ground. There's no big city here. <laughs> this is how old this map is. It blows my mind. I wanted to show you guys, look at, so we've got natives over here on this lake. But look at this. So this fish right here, that's either a pike or a muskie. Schwazaru, okay? Look at the teeth on it. I thought it could be a sturgeon because look at the size of it compared to the boat. Nothing is in scale on this map, but it's just funny. But it's not a sturgeon because look, up here in this corner of the map, we've got the tur Sturgeon. <laughs> that is a sturgeon. Look at this. Crown and wreaths. Look at the symbols going around here. Fleur de Lis. Oh, just amazing. There are ships. Okay, so this would be representation of the ships that were used in that time. This is cool. Look at Castor. That's beaver. 
So the whole Northland was full of beaver, and that's what this map is about. These were trade routes for North American furs. That's why they were here. They were trading with natives. I also found down here is a Martin. Martre. Okay? So all fur-bearing animals. Now there are some animals on here. I don't know what this is. Anybody want to hazard a guess as to what, what is that? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> oh, yes. 13-year-old Gary is giddy. I mean, look at it. Come on. What is it? What is that? What is that supposed to be? Take a look at these other two ships. And look, they've got cannons on the ship, right? 1612. I believe that the first uh, people to use cannons were the Portuguese, and it was in the late 15, 1580s, somewhere around there. Some more flora and fauna over here on this side. I don't know if these are supposed to be the natives. I'm not sure what's going on in this depiction right here because the natives do not have facial hair, right? So, they don't look very native. They look European to me. So I'm not sure what's going on with the, with the people. Figure de Montaigne. Not sure. But really, really cool piece of history. Good morning, guys. I know it's noisy. Uh, it's a new day. John's anticipating rain today. So we're here with Stan and John, and we're going back to the colonial site that paid off from a couple of visits ago and uh, anticipating some good stuff. Okay, guys, we are back at the promised land. I don't know why, but I had to twist these guys' arms to get them back up here. I don't know what's going on. One wants to go for coffee, and the other one wants to go for a hike. <laughs> And I'm going to start right here where I left off with that last cufflink and see if I can find the second one. I'm not giving you your fire badge if you can't get that going. There is a, an old piece of china. Second hole of the day guys, another musket ball. This one looks like smaller, so maybe pistol? I don't know. Okay, they were hooting and hollering and I had to come back from a hundred yards away. This better be good boys, better be good. Trade arrow point. That is good. I think there's another one in there. Yeah, I think so too, maybe. Okay, I don't know, but I'm just gonna throw this out there. Could be totally wrong, but hammer on an old gun? <laughs> Wishful thinking? I don't know. Okay, so here guys is a tool that I found. You can see there's a hook on one end here and the other end's got a bit of a twist to it. So we think this was used for repairing like a hook and all system for repairing the birch bark canoes or maybe leather work. Not 100% sure on that, but uh, that's what we think it is. Guys, first score of the day. I don't know if you can see it, but it's in here. Right there, we got a ring. And it's not broken, it's still in one piece. And there is some kind of writing on it. Beauty, Gary, beauty. I'll oh, touch it. <laughs> See if we can get the what the writing is on here. Okay guys, that is as clean as I can get it here in the bush. We've used a very light toothbrush and some water. Looks like there's a hammer on the top, and then the, the Roman numerals 2, and then IS. So that is a 300 year old trade ring, guys. Very small, f doesn't even fit on my pinky. Might fit on my pinky, but. Oh, absolutely friggin' amazing. I wanna talk about the Jesuit missions in North America. That ring that we dug was so significant and so old, and that was lost on me at the time that we were there working at the fort. I just didn't understand how far back the history went. And to find the first Jesuits in our area, you have to come down here to their fourth mission, which was 1625. The Jesuits conceived plans to move their efforts to the banks of the St. Laurent River. Well, the St. Laurent is the St. Lawrence, okay? Uh, a fourth mission was established in 1625, made by Fathers Charles Lamont as superior 
Edmond Massé, Jean de Brebeuf, and assistants Francois Charton and Gilbert Burette. The mission failed following the occupation of Quebec by English forces in 1629, but that was the first trip that they made down and they started spreading their gospel. Take a look at this 1632 uh, drawing here. Look at the symbol right in the middle. There it is. There is the Jesuit symbol. I thought the ring had a little hammer on the top of it, but it's a cross. I-H-S and a cross. And this image here is dated 1632. Okay, last hole at the uh, colonial honey hole here. So we figured we'd do it live. No promises. It's a decent signal, 70s and 80s. How many guys does it take to find a 17th century nail? Good thing this isn't 1970 or I would have run out of film. <laughs> yeah. Come on, we're going to China. <laughs> Help me turn on the pointer. Oh, God. I think it's time for coffee, the guys. <laughs> Another old one. Oh. Another. All that way. Another, Another rose head. 17th century nail. There's how deep everything is. There is, well, a two prong fork holy relic. <laughs> he didn't even give me time to get the camera out and he got it. You never find a fork, that's a good find. <laughs> a two prong or that's date that. <laughs> so find a mark on you somewhere. do not want to bend that. Uh <laughs> as we just learned, I tried to bend it. Nope. <laughs> it's gonna break. Good find, buddy, good find. Just following Stan to the fourth spot of the day. An old early junction. So we are gonna go check that out after. There's like an old underground uh, passage over there. And right here is old. So we're on the old railroad right here. And you can see it drops off quite a bit down there. So this is the uh, one of the first boarding houses site right here. There's a first for me, a thimble. I have, yeah, I've never found a thimble before. There you go, silver. I don't think so. There you go, buddy. Not silver. And then now I got a big old spoon here. So this boarding house, to give you some context, was circa 1880. John's got a large scent here. Clean it off. Where's the brush? I left my brush in the car. This might be my oldest. I'm seeing 1858, I think. John's blind, so I'll, I'll verify yeah, for her. <laughs> okay, guys, 1888. Oh, yeah, that's a... Look at the handle on that, eh? Yeah. And here's an old pry bar, 100-year-old pry bar. Plus, now you're plus easily 140 year old pry bar almost. Yeah. So John's got another large scent, he says here. 1882. Damn you. <laughs> Good job, buddy. Okay, there is a really old, cool little button, guys. It's got a design on it, it's cracked, full of water, but it has a shank on the back. So, I mean, that's got to be 1800s. Okay, so John's just washing up another coin. <laughs> what do you got? I can't see. Okay, guys, 1903, a V nickel. You can see the face, the bust facing to the left there. And it's worn right out, as most of them are. But there's the date, 1903. Okay, something pretty cool that, uh, so I turned this over and it was really heavy, full of dirt. Didn't know what it was. <laughs> it's an old bell. <laughs> what do you guys got? Look at this buckle. Oh, look at that. There's a whole bunch. Look at that for a buckle. It's got little leaves on it. Gold plated. Nice find, John. Nice find. Oh, yes, finally. 
Johnny's just been smoking it up all day. That's I've got a coin. Largie. That's a largey. Yeah. And my oldest coin is 1893, I believe. So if we can get an 1880 something here, I'm going to set my own personal re best record. I think you just did, man. I'm going to clean this off and we'll show you guys. We cannot figure out the date on this. He, he sees 1902, I saw 1862, he sees 1864. <laughs> uh, we're going to have to take this home and clean it. Let me take it out. I cannot. Hold on. Maybe the phone will do something for me here. It's an old one if it's old. It's got a hole in it at the top. Somebody wore this as a necklace. So I, I see a two at the end. And whether it's a six, okay, so it's Edward on this side. It's got to be in 1902. Not my oldest coin to date. Oh, Stan found the fence. That's the second one he's found today. You all right, buddy? Yeah, there it is right there. Thanks. I'll gently step over that. Okay, what do we have here? we have here sir it currently goes under our wonderful new highway but this went under our old highway that's I can't even explain it okay we just got to get John to go in there I mean that goes right through look at that railroad ties that's that's nothing to do with the way that highway up there was built all railroad tie construction under a major modern highway all right guys, we are doing a roundup here and this is an amazing roundup. So I've broken it into groups by century, okay? So you tell me where else you're gonna see stuff like this. We've got 17th century over here, rosehead nails. 17th century steel arrowhead. The old trade ring, which I'm gonna do some research on and figure out what those initials are. Musket balls. Then we've got uh, late 1800s uh, large scents. The five cent, 1903, something like that. This really cool 1800s buckle. Some more 1800s stuff, thimble, button, spoons. The old cowbell, 1800s. So this is where I send out my plea to you guys. The last uh, colonial video I did got 200 views. You show me somebody else that's Canadian and presenting this stuff, these finds guys, and I will sub to them and watch tomorrow. So all I'm saying is if you guys can help me, you enjoy what we're doing, what we're finding here, spread the word. I would like to get more than 200 views on these videos. This, these are amazing finds. So that's it for today, guys. We will be back in the field tomorrow. Thanks for watching, and we'll catch you in the next video.